You're listening to Sounds of Louisiana podcast on the Radio Random Network. Thank you so much for hitting the download button. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Get a 30-day free trial and download a free audio book to any smart device by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash RRN online. Racket Sound Lighting and DJ Services for big production on a musician's budget. Contact Bob Tolar at 225-773-4639. And by Amazon.com. When you visit RRNOnline.com and shop with Amazon through the links on the website, they give money back to us to help with production costs and bandwidth. Thank you for all the support and enjoy the show. Happy New Year, everybody. Yes, indeed. We wish all y'all a happy New Year. Hope Santa Claus is good to you. How was your New Year? Even y'all Alabama people. Alabama people. by Marty Rayburn. Boy, you're going to like that interview. <laughs> Had a chance to talk to him Saturday night. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I mean, I mean, he can sing and all, but, you know, there ain't no counting. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. He likes him some Bear Bryant. Yeah, I ain't got buying, Bear Bryant's a good coach. I ain't got nothing against him, but I can't I can't take that. I mean, that's a, I can't take it. <laughs> it bothers me. He, he, I can't take it. Well, how was your Christmas? It was good. It was good. We had a good Christmas. Everybody. You know, was jolly and, and well. And Santa Claus stopped. And, you know, I, we all made out like bandits, and it was just great. You know, it was great. How about awesome. yours? You had a good one. I'm glad it's over with, man. Well, yeah, me too. Me too. It wore me out. Yeah, yeah, it did me too. Well, I mean, it's just busy, constantly. I mean, there was something every day, and it's something every night. You know, and. Then, Doing, uh, you know, doing the business, so to speak, and yeah. having to turn around and take care of them badass kids, and then go, you know, Tanya pretty much did all the Christmas shopping, thank God. But everything well, she got, you had, you had to put batteries in, uh-huh, so. or put together. Yeah. Well, well you know, I don't well, that know. that made Daddy happy. I, you know what? I don't, I don't know if I'd be telling that. You know? <laughs> It was things she got you had to put batteries in. You might want to. <laughs> well, I didn't want to keep that to yourself. I, I didn't think. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> it's been wild. Got a lot of good interviews coming up. 2015. I'm looking forward to them. Yes, indeed. Had a chance to talk to T. Graham Brown today. Oh, uh, T. Graham. On this show, I got a chance to go to the refuge with the animal. Yeah. Now, he didn't get too out of line, didn't put no bathing suit or anything he on didn't. But No. He wanted to. Probably. Probably. Ain't no probably to it. <laughs> he wanted to. Had a chance to talk to the void. Yeah. Uh Jim George and uh, Jim I remember Stanley. Jim. Yeah. Jim good people. Yes indeed. They got a it's an all original band. You you might like some of the stuff. They gave me uh, a couple of CDs. I got yours well, in I the need car. Them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all original. I have one the good. That's how I have a listen. Yeah. But other than that, uh, anything new in Mudtooth World? Uh, first off, before we get too far down the road, happy 80th birthday, Elvis. Elvis, that's right. Elvis Presley is 80 years old. You notice I'm saying he is 80 years old today because I, he, y'all, y'all people think he's dead. He ain't dead. You don't think he's dead? No, no. Man, when, I, <laughs> when me and my bride was on our honeymoon, we went to Graceland. Oh, really? Okay, on the way back, we went to Graceland. And, uh, you didn't see I him in like him, a sweat stain. No, I seen, him, I seen him peeking out from upstairs. They, 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 they won't let you go upstairs, but I seen him. He, he, well, he thought he was quick, but, you know, he, he, he was old. He's not as quick as much, too. Right. I seen him. What did you get in it? Did he have a beard or anything? No, or no. We had sunglasses on, though. You know, it had been said that he, he works for the FBI. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's true? I don't know if he does, but uh, Santa Claus does. <laughs> but I, but uh, Elvis. Well, you know, Elvis did. He he wanted to be the police. He uh he had a badge collection. He did. He did. He had a badge collection. Uh, uh he uh he you know for a fella that you know liked dope as much as he did. <laughs> <laughs> he liked it. Well, you know, I mean, he you know. It was prescription medication, and back then, you know, that really wasn't nobody really thought to think about that. I guess you know, but. Uh, you know, nowadays we know different, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, Elvis, bless his heart, you know, he can sing, but he's a pill head. And <laughs> he, uh, but yeah, so happy 80th birthday, 
Elvis Presley. To peel headed Elvis. To the, right, to the king. And peel head you. Oh, well, he's probably off of that by now. <laughs> Hope so. Yeah, I mean, you know, how, how many how many 80 year old peel head you ever met? <laughs> you know, I ain't saying they ain't out there. I'm um, saying they probably rare. I met, I met, I'm. I met a couple, yeah, actually. A couple. <laughs> I mean, that ain't uh, nothing to joke about. <laughs> Big D is nothing to clap. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know what Elvis? I wonder what Elvis would be saying if he was alive right now. Help! Let me out of this box. Help! Help! Let me out you, of this box. Thank God you've done it. That's that's all some little tasteless Elvis humor. <laughs> there ain't nothing like it. You know, you was talking um, off the subject of uh, Peel Headed Elvis. Yeah. And that, I think that's going to be the title of this show. Peel Headed Elvis. Yeah. Um, Which, you know, uh, might be a good band name. Peel Headed Elvis. Peel Headed Elvis. That is a good idea. I think that might be a good band name. Yes, indeed. It's all right. It's all right. We need to think about that. It might look good on a t shirt. Yeah. Instead of Viva Lost, they could be re- Viva Viva Rock Vegas. Yeah. You know, like, ain't that a movie? I was the Flintstones. I yeah, yeah. I was talking yeah. about the other rock. Yeah, don't, don't bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't it bring was that bad back. enough. I don't know what them damn people was thinking when they did that. They was thinking money, yeah. kids, marketing. Yeah, that was terrible. It mean, very much so was. Uh, I had a chance to talk to Marty Rayburn from uh, Shenandoah. How's old boy doing? Marty is, he's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen the pictures. He's doing good. He, he's eating well. That's good. To see. He, he can sing. I'll tell you that. I know. Very down to earth. And I've seen the coolest thing in the world. I, and I'm going to give props. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to brag on these guys just because, you know, they're my boys. But, and they support us. But Relentless Saturday night at Good Old Boys, I've seen a different band. I've seen them. It was, it was cool, as, as, you know, to watch. You know, not not as friends, but as musicians, watch those guys actually step up. I guess mm-hmm. you know. I mean, they was always they was always a good band. But Saturday night, Mike Deaton, Steve Haney, uh, Kevin Amy, Jordan Babin, they actually stepped out the box. You know what I mean? They stepped up to that, I guess, level of, you know, I guess the best way to put it, almost they're almost the measuring stick. Yeah, around here. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to make anybody, uh, you know, make a competition or anything like that. But mm-hmm. as far as their genre goes, they really stepped up. They really did something. It was a different band, the yeah. energy level. I mean, I mean, that's a good way. It was, I'm saying that uh, in a, in a good way. Um, they started out tonight. I mean, they set the, they set the energy for Shenandoah. And then the coolest thing, you know, we standing there and I'm standing there with Steve Haney. And uh, Steve was chomping at the bits. You know, he wanted to get on stage with Shannon Doe. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, which I mean, it was Marty Rayburn and the three other. I mean, two other guys who were just playing acoustic guitar. It, I told. I mean, Steve just walked on stage. I mean, just the, the ballsiest thing I've ever seen in my like life. Like he had left something up there. He yeah, he walked <laughs> up there, and you know, Marty kind of looked. And I know you can't see me, but he kind of. It was so funny how he did it because he put his head down and went. <laughs> picked up his guitar and pulled up a seat. The next thing you know, you know, the rest of the band got up there right. and uh, props to also props to Kevin Amy. To I, I seen a different I seen a different bass player than right. Saturday night. That was uh, awesome. Good on you, Kevin. What did it, you watched any football lately? Is is it still oh, football season? Yeah, my my Steelers lost. I mean, you know, I gave up on the Saints a while back. You know, so I just trying to figure out who I was going to pull for in the playoffs, and I was going to pull for the Steelers, and then the Ravens smacked them around. And I cannot pull for Dallas under any circumstances, so I guess I'll pull for Green Bay. And then you got uh, both the Ravens and the Patriots, and I damn sure ain't going to pull for Tom Brady and them. <laughs> um, I just, you know, I got a thousand reasons why not. So I guess I'm going to. I guess I'm going to go for Green Bay and Baltimore. And if I got to pick between them two, I guess I'm going to say go pack go. You know, I'm going I'm to pull for Green Bay. Um, you know, that's just yeah. NFC. Let's go. Yeah. That's what I see. I don't really, uh, 
you know, I don't really watch the sport or anything, but we do have a sponsor, DraftKings.com. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. You can get on there and do football. your fantasy football. I don't understand fantasy football. Neither uh, do I don't understand football. Well, I mean, I, I understand football, but I don't understand fantasy football all in I know people that play it, and uh, I've had people, you know, I don't know, a dozen people ask me to join the league, and and, and I just you know, I don't understand enough about it to, to where I'd want to do it. And most of them, like, you know, it costs money because whoever wins, like, they win the pot, you know. And uh, I, I just, you know, I, I, I'm just I'm a simple fella. You know, I like to watch football. Now, they say that, you know, if you play this, that it'll make you watch more games because you worry about how your running back's doing. You know, he might play for Cleveland or somebody, you know, and uh, somebody you don't normally watch, you know. So you'll watch that trying to see how he did or how he's doing, or you might have a receiver, you know, plays for the 49ers or whatever, you know. And I just, you know, that's, that's, a, lot of, that's a lot of time and trouble in any way. It sounds like it. Well, especially like, you know, well, I mean, during when college football is going on, I mean, I'm wrapped up with LSU. I can't be, you know, fooling with them, you know, all that <laughs> business. Whether I like it or not, I'm wrapped up with LSU, too. Well, thanks to my Go Tigers. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. I mean, you know, you would think, you know, it's one of the police ain't showed up at the house thinking that I was beating her or she was beating me <laughs> because <laughs> of all the crazy. hollering and, the, you know, and I'm just sitting there watching Mm-hmm. And I, the words that come out of that woman's mouth, you know, any other time, she, you know, I wouldn't say reserved, but she does watch what she says half the time until football season. And Lord, look out. She mm-hmm. lets them rip. Oh, look, I get plum ornery. I mean, it's especially this year, it was a lot of it. It was a now, lot of it. But speaking of uh, the Tiger, uh, last night I, I had the privilege of, uh, of escorting about 20 guys from Georgia over there to the stadium and let them see the Tiger. And, uh, boy, he was out. You know, he was out walking around, strutting around, posing. He'd open his mouth, stick his tongue out, and shake his head, just all kind of stuff, you know. Was that Mike? Mike. And he was up there by the fence, you know, right there. I mean, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was pretty close. So all the guys, they was up there and they had their phones. and He was going back and forth, you know, and they was running around trying to get in front of him and take a picture. He went up to one of them, boy. He snorted at him. That old boy jumped back, and I said, "I see, smell that damn bulldog." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, now, is there any kind of thing whenever uh, whenever he starts getting frisky? Is that a good sign? Or I, I, I guess I mean he don't. They don't make him do nothing. Uh, yeah, he, I mean he, when you show up to the stadium he's got a and four million dollar habitat, and he don't yeah. have to work but seven days a year, and he didn't even do that this year. <laughs> uh, last night, one of the guys asked me, you know, what do they do? with him on the game day and I said well I don't make him do nothing but I told him how it goes you know put him in a trailer and bring him around the field and all he said oh so they don't let him roam around on the field well no he's a tiger and I just all these thoughts went through my head <laughs> and I decided I'd be nice and I just said no no they don't do that no, he, he's not a bulldog no no I don't know that I'd let a bulldog roam around on the field but I, <laughs> I certainly I'm like what well, you know I had this image like somebody's gonna hold him on a leash what yeah like, have you seen he's this a thing? tiger have you seen this thing? He gnaws legs. Good shit. Lord, I mean, he's big. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was just wondering, like, if you get there and he be just it's like a lazy day and no Mike's just stretched out, you know, licking his paw, you know, being a – Well, normally on game – a lot of times on game day, you want him to come out. You just stay back in the back because he don't like all that noise is what they say. Oh, really? Yeah, because, you know, they got they have a band playing right there. And, of course, everybody and their brother's out there. You got, you know, a million people walking around and, uh, and it's hot. And most of the time, you know, until it gets about, you know, November. And so most of the season is pretty warm. Uh, and he's a Siberian tiger. Yeah. You know, he was real frisky last night, you know, 20-degree right, right. weather. Uh, but he uh, normally just stays back there in the back. Sometimes he'll be out, you know. Uh, they say he splashes in the water a lot, but I hadn't seen him. Uh, but this year, I, you hardly didn't see him. For game day, huh? Yeah, I he's mean, doing. I'm best. one of them, you know. I, I don't mind putting him in that cage, you know, and you don't have to hurt. I, I want you, I want you animal lovers to listen, <laughs> listen to me, okay? I I like animals. I don't, you know, I'm not gonna say I'm an animal lover, but I like animals. And they, you know, 
I ain't saying you got to poke him and prod him and, you know, burn him with a, a cattle prod, okay? I mean, but, you know, all you got to do is go a day without feeding him, all right? <laughs> he ain't going to starve. And then the next day, you throw a ribeye up in that trailer, and he'll go up in there. And he won't argue. And when he goes up in there, you shut the gate behind him, and there he is. <laughs> and then you tend to him. You know, you go ride around the field, and you let him. I mean, it don't take what, what you're going to You're going to be out of there an hour. You know, that's, that's bullshit. Uh, so, so do they have a problem with Mike being in the trailer uh, or getting him in the trailer? Yeah, he won't go. <laughs> Really? I'm like, well, he's a cat, man. They don't do nothing. I, don't, you know, if if a cat if a cat does something, and you cat people back me up on this, all right? If a cat jumps up in your lap, it's that cat's idea, not yours. Right. No matter what you think, you know. I said, kitty, 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 and the cat jumped up. Guess what? If it didn't want to, it wouldn't do it. Right. Dogs are not that way. Dogs are, you know, better. <laughs> okay yeah dogs are better i just i don't like cats i don't like cats because because i you can't cats don't have eyebrows and you can't tell what they're thinking and i don't i don't like that okay to make me nervous a little bit you know i used to have a cat and the damn thing uh she jump up in your lap and want you to pet her and you pet her and then she turn around and bite you <laughs> you know and i just i don't care for that <laughs> right you know i i I find that, you know, that's very disloyal. I come out of the shell last night. First time I, I had a chance to. That's uh, right. You had your gig. I went and played. And, uh, Whose guitar did you use? Yours. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> that's the way love goes. All right. Look, folks, if uh, if your guitar needs repair. You need to go to Jody Mayhew. Don't Don't <laughs> bring it to Russell. Okay. He's not going. He can't fix his own. No, like, don't don't do that. But uh, bring it to a professional. Jody Mayu would do it for you right bring there it in Walker. Jody Mayu for all your musicality needs. All of it, every bit of it. And speaking of which, a free plug for Jody. Well, and another thing, we got to uh, understand we have a, a swap meet coming up. That's right, uh, February twenty first. February twenty first at the Wildcat Station. At the Wildcat Station in Central Louisiana. If you you know if you're a musician or if you're not a musician and you have some old, maybe you came across a set of drums somewhere that you don't need. Anything you don't need, that's right. You can come. You can actually buy a table. It's very cheap. Yeah. You can set your stuff up. Come uh, you on up. Contact Bob up. Tolar. I'll put all that good uh, information in the show notes. Right. You but uh, I'm going to tell you what. It's been off the subject of the uh, – back to the subject of me playing last night. You know? that, yeah, you enjoyed it? <laughs> it was tough. It was it was actually uh, tough. I mean, um, what was tough about it? The trying to, I guess you know I've been behind the, uh, doing this, uh, doing the podcast and stuff, mm-hmm. and getting back into that group. I mean it. It's a uh, you know I've been off I guess what about a year, something like that. Mm-hmm. When's the last time we played? It ain't been a year, it has been it? Been a year no. It's, uh, it's been a while. It's been a few months. It's been a few months. I'd probably say maybe four months. Well, has it been four months since the last time we played? Three or four months. Three or four months. But it, it, I'm talking, I mean, that. But is this back before Thanksgiving? Yes. It's back before Thanksgiving. I'd say probably October. It was during football season We because we, we played and they was the Saints was playing. So it would have been September, October, I think. Yeah, 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 you're right. Maybe maybe preseason, something like that. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it? August? Mm-hmm. It was after that. September, you might be right. It might have been oh, uh, September. September. I'm it, kind of ready to, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am too. I mean, it's time to scratch the itch. And uh, we're getting back out there slowly but surely. I'm easing back into it. It just, you know, I got to learn to say no to a few things. Right. I get so much going on, but... uh Last night, it was hard to find the energy at first. Yeah, it came to you, though, right? It it, it did. After a few minutes, now, I, I kind of got back in the groove. Lee, I was playing with Lee. Lee. Yeah, who is crazy as all get out. But I'm not, I don't think I've met. I don't think I've met, my, I've met Lee. I don't believe I've met He's him. a good player. He's he's a good player. Tiny Terry uh, Terry Petrie. Right. Was, uh, one of the uh, – it's hard to beat Terry on some drums, man. He and a is, member of the drummer's. Collective. Drummer collective. 
And also, I had to play. Co-op. In, play yes, indeed. Had a chance to play with uh, one of the probably the the one of the best bass players in the state of Louisiana, Dana Hall, who plays with uh, Stormy. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, Boss Tweed mm-hmm. as well. And dude, this guy knows every song in the world. I, he knows every song in the world, mm-hmm. and he ex- he expects you. To know it. To know every song in the world as well, well you just know. Just tell him you do. And, uh, he don't know if you know him or not. Yeah. You know, you just go with it. You say, okay. He tells stories about, you know, when he used to travel and be in um, different uh, bands and open for different people. And he's played with big time people. You know, he tells him, uh, how'd Terry say it? Uh, broken dreams. The bus they rode on smelt like broken dreams and hippies. <laughs> to quote uh, Tiny Terry Petrie, you know. That's pretty good. But, uh, yeah, they got a lot of good upcoming events coming up. Yeah, that might be another. Uh, that might be a good name for our album. Broken Dreams and Broken Hippies. Broken Dreams and Hippies. I was thinking about it today. I thought uh, alcohol and high explosives would be a good name <laughs> for an uh, album. Yeah. You know. And, Are, you, and you could show. And you said picture could be. Could be a little kid holding a, a bottle of whiskey in one hand and, and a dynamite? sparkler in the other. <laughs> I think that would be good. Whiskey and sparkler. Yeah, you know, it could happen. That's America. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. That's crazy. I, I've I've thought about um, maybe doing some stuff in the studio. Maybe. Um, Writing some stuff might be a good idea for us to do it. Just doesn't even as a novelty, especially after talking to the Void the other night. They got a song called uh, one of the songs off of the album. I think it's track ten, playing in a rock and roll band. Mm -hmm. And it was what's cool about the song is they start with the youngest guy in the band, and then the song ends with the oldest guy singing a verse. That's cool. That goes through the years of of playing. I guess you know he starts out he's playing mountain over there. Yeah. One of these days, I want to climb that mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I wasn't uh, the oldest guy. I wasn't Jim, was it? Uh, it actually, it was. It was Jim George. I ain't trying to pick on you, Jim. I'm just, you know. Hey, it happens. Hey, He's the most experienced. That just means you're not dead yet, right? But Jim, there went, Jim plays... Uh, in a few different a happy uh, song. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's my email, which I usually keep the ringer off because it bothers me. But well, you know, I'm not, this ain't the courthouse. I ain't gonna charge you fifty dollars. You know, <laughs> they charge that at the court. Some of them do. And then and and that's I've heard the judge get up there and, and say, you know why? You know, charge you fifty dollars. Phone goes off and then their phone will go off. Oh really? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say, ha, ha. <laughs> but I don't want to see them reach in their pocket. I wouldn't laugh at a judge. Yeah, I don't. Not to their face. Yeah, it's not a, It's not advisable. Uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, real quick. Have you paid any attention to what's going on with that? Uh, remind me who's going in this year. Uh, I know for sure because it's the only one that I really care about. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Double Trouble. Yes, that's right. That's right. they finally going in. God bless them. Uh, that's a long time coming. I don't know what took them so long. Um, you know, I, 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 it's so bad when you think about Stevie Ray because the man revolutionized blues guitar. Say what you want. Um, say what you want, he did, and you know, and, and did it, you know, battling addiction. Finally got sober, was preaching rehab, and then died in a helicopter crash. Um, uh, I'm not I trying to be uh funny or anything, but I guess he was better off being a drug head. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think. Well, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's weird how it worked out. I mean, I don't think it would have mattered. He got if he straight was, and died. If he was stoned or not, you know, <laughs> I don't think it had anything to do with the plane. I, mean, I don't think he was driving. Let's he, say he, yeah, he shouldn't have been flying. You know, 
But uh, I mean, just for they'll never be, never be another one. And you know, when when you watch him, and I didn't, I was not fortunate enough to see him live. I've talked to people that did, and uh, and they say the same thing that I see when I watch a video of him, and it it flowed out. It was like a faucet. He just turned it on. He turned it on, and it, it came out of him, and, and he didn't get lost. Um, you know, it was, it was, he was an amazing to watch. He was a, he was a force of nature. Um, uh, he had two good, solid, uh, band members. Um, uh, you know, the, the Tommy Layton and, uh, was it Tommy Layton or Tommy Shannon? Tommy Shannon. Yes. Tommy Shannon. And, uh, I mean, it was just, they was, they was solid. They was right there in the pocket. Um, and it, you know, for a three-piece band, you know, they filled it up, and, and it wasn't, you know, yeah, there's three-piece bands out there, ZZ Top being one of them, uh, who've done some amazing stuff. But you know, the thing about it is, ZZ Top, in their later years, they used a lot of sequence and stuff, and uh, Steve Ray and them didn't do that. He he had enough where he could fill it all up with the guitar, and it was amazing. Yes, indeed. Well, you know, toward the end, they did uh, Reed, um, man, what was the name? Uh, Reed, he was a guitar um, piano player. Yeah. They did add him. But toward the end, they did add. Um, yeah, they had a piano player, and that was good, but they didn't have to have him. No, no. You know, they, that was just gravy. And, uh, oh, Stevie Ray was, uh, I, I've talked to people that's actually, now it was before my time, so I never did get a chance to see him live, but I've talked to people that actually have seen him live, and they said the first probably five minutes he couldn't stand the volume level because oh, he I'm played sure. so loud. But I'm sure. After a while, you got used to it. Yeah, well, it's like living next to the railroad track. After a while, you won't hear the train. Which is scary as hell if you're not used to it. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, now, and it's so much difference between him and his brother Jimmy. You know, Jimmy can play, but Jimmy ain't nearby as Stevie Ray. And they, they, and their styles are so different, so different. Jimmy, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy was a lot more sloppy, and, and I'm not saying sloppy in a bad way. He I'm also played with a fabulous thunder, right? Um, and good musician, and he done some good stuff. I'm just saying he's different, you know. He's a lot, a lot, not very. You know, they they didn't play similarly, in in my opinion, at all. No, no, no. I don't think. I think Jimmy kind of sucked. I seen him playing with a uh, capo, and the reason I say that is because I reached out for him to have an interview on here. His management denied me. Well, shit so, on him. Man. Yeah, boo Jimmy. I wouldn't buy <laughs> none of his boo records. Boo on him. Who does Jimmy Vaughn? Jimmy Vaughn would be nothing without Stevie Ray. Yeah. And the God bless Kenny Wayne Shepherd. All right. That's right. Him and his management, uh, William Morris Endeavors, and those guys, they're, they're great. Good. Working out details now. Kenny Wayne Shepherd. I won't, yeah, now, I won't be there for that one. Yeah, we, we'll we set it up. We'll set it up. And there's, there's one more, and you know who it is. And I'm oh, yeah. Well, we, I, I haven't, that hasn't really uh, been confirmed we, just we'll yet. We'll keep it down. But I think that'll be a big show. We'll keep it down. T. Graham Brown next week is going to be on, uh, the following week is going to be me and you, and we'll probably play you the clip from um, the Marty Rayburn interview. Yeah, from from good old boys. And uh, well, I guess we'll wrap it up, and we'll throw it over to uh, myself and Void. Uh, a final thought uh, before we go, folks. Uh, get ready for big things. Big things. Hold tight. Grab a hold of something. Hold on to the one you love or whomever you have by you. That might be your cat if you want them people. But hang on because it's, you know, a big doings coming in the world of Radio Random. And uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad y'all out there. I hope y'all glad I'm here. Uh, I'm glad you remembered the secret password to get in my, yeah. my, my fortress of solitude. Thousands of miles below the earth, <laughs> below the earth's crust. 
Uh, <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> yeah, well, just wait till you get back outside. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's cold as a well digger's ass out By there. the way, before we go, I want to send a shout out to uh, Yuma from uh, Buenos Aires, it was, Argentina. Argentina. You see how I botched that? That's, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, she she reached out with the Nick West um Nick's West deal and and all that good stuff and uh just want to say she she's listening to the show, faithful listener. You know, happy, well, good. Hey. Happy birthday. Um from America. Yeah, Buenos Noches. Buenos Aires. That's uh that's all I know. That's all I know to say. So yes, uh, indeed. glad that glad that you're listening and and keep it up. I, if I knew more Spanish, I would all I know how to do is is ask where the bathroom is. And uh, I know like taco and burrito and cervezas beer. That's that's all the Spanish I know. So yes, indeed. you know, and, and good night. But when it's noches. Well, until next week, I guess that's it. All right. Be sure to visit the website and all that good stuff. And subscribe, a- share, folks. Like, you know, it don't take review. me a like. Don't take but a second. AudibleTrial.com forward slash R R N online. DraftKings.com, use the promo code RRN Live for your right. chance to win the hundred the ten million dollars in the fantasy football ten million dollars giveaway. Shit, yeah. I don't do that. Well actually it's not for people in Louisiana, I found out. But Aww. anybody else around the world Aww. anybody else around the world wanna <laughs> enter, you know, visit the Amazon. Hey, all right, links. You know what that gets? That gets the rip. Hey, today's show is brought to you by Audible, the leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. Listen to audiobooks whenever and whatever you want. Get a free audiobook when you sign up for a free trial at www.audibletrial.com RRN Live. Pick out a free audiobook with over 150,000 titles to choose from, from major authors to New York Times bestsellers. That's audibletrial.com forward slash RRN Live. Hey, we want to send a shout out to one of our great local sponsors, Racket Sound Lighting and DJ Services. For a big production on a musician's budget, contact Bob Tolar at 225-773-4639. That's 225-773-4639. You know, there's many ways to support the Radio Random Network. One way to support the Radio Random Network is by visiting www.rrnonline.com and shopping with Amazon through the links provided on our website. When you shop with Amazon through the links on the website, they kick us back a little money, no cost to you. And that helps pay for bandwidth, updating our equipment, and it also helps with production costs. So the next time you go to shop with Amazon, visit rrnonline.com and use our Amazon links provided. From the Refuge, it's the first episode of Sounds of Louisiana of 2015. This week, I'm joined by The Void. Hey! Hello. Yes, indeed, as, as Jim George takes pictures of everybody. That's what I always do. That's what he does. The official band photographer. He's like That's mom. He's the, yeah, he's, the, he's the band mom. Keep talking. That's right. I got Bill Grass, Matt Labore. There you go. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Jim Stanley and founding member of the Baton Rouge Drummers Collective, Jim George, and also in the room, another founding member, Mr. Randy the Animal Porter. Yo. <laughs> this band, the, just like the Drummers Collective, was all Randy's idea. It was all Randy's <laughs> idea. That Randy's full of good ideas. Like full of pictures of bikinis. Yeah. <laughs> He's the only one that's a rock star, though. He's made it on MTV. That's true. Oh, yeah. yeah. Congratulations to that. We'd like to go ahead and uh, insert the plug here now for uh, Randy's debut on Ridiculousness. Is there coming a up this, Yeah, coming up this spring. Not yet. I've got to get in touch with him in February. February. Call us in February. Yes, indeed. So, guys, how's it been? How's it going? What's happening? Fantastic. Music. Absolutely great. <laughs> Absolutely. It's hard being a rock star, but we're making it. Yes, indeed. So, how is the uh, y'all got a new you got a new album coming out 2015? Well, it's already out, correct? It is out. It is iTunes, out. Uh, iTunes, CD Spotify, Baby, Spotify, Spotify uh, Amazon, yeah, and Shazam. Shazam coming up soon. Worldwide. That's right. And, and Jim George's trunk. And Jim yes. Trump. <laughs> I got to move the bodies to make room. The uh. name of the band is The Void. Now, where did the name come from? Well, when we first started this this whole thing out. We had the idea that we wanted to play original rock and roll tunes 
but in sort of the format of uh, mid to late 70s rock and roll, uh, we noticed as much really awesome music as there is in Baton Rouge. There are tons of really talented musicians and great groups, but we seem to see a little bit of a, although we just seem to see what we perceived as a void and what we considered rock and roll, at least kind of a mid to late 70s type rock and roll. And uh, we just started saying that we were going to fill that void with what we were doing here. Uh, that name just sort of stuck with us. So uh, that's that's sort of how, how we got where we are now. Yes, indeed. We are the void. <laughs> Jim Doris <laughs> practicing his uh, God voice. Now, the first show, the debut show is uh, Friday. Friday what? night. It's it's CD release, release party. CD yes. release party yes. as in Phil Brady's Baton Rouge, correct? Right? Yes. On Jimmy Page's birthday. And who is that? <laughs> Jimmy Page's birthday. <laughs> Jimmy Page's yeah, birthday. He'll, he'll be there, right? Shout out yeah, to Jimmy that's Page. right. I sent a personal invitation well, if, to him. If, and he, if he doesn't respond, he'll hear this. And he'll yeah, that's right. Sure I hope he will. Pagey, yeah. come on. We want to see you. Pagey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're right. good buds. <laughs> <laughs> if he's listening, he just cut us off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good. I'm just kidding. All right, so let's let, let's go back to the beginning with all of you. We'll start with you, Jim George. Where did it start with you with music, man? How did you get involved in playing the drums? I am very happy to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking to call immigration. <laughs> when I started playing drums, uh, actually, I was just thinking about this today. The very first time I played drums was on stage at University High School, and somebody had left their drum set there. And uh, I had just heard the song, Those Shoes by the Eagles, and I decided to try to approximate that. And approximate is a very, very nice way of putting it. It was not anywhere near an approximation of it. But <laughs> I like to use that word when I'm trying to cover for the fact that I can't do it. <laughs> this is an approximation. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, and uh, ever since then, though, I decided that it was something I would learn to do. Uh, and drumming is uh, my, my passion, but now uh, songwriting and being with these guys right now is, is really my focus. Uh, you know, drumming and playing music all these years professionally has led me to this point to where I can be with these guys and have this opportunity to actually do uh, our own music, my own music, our own music, either that we've each, you know, written individually or we've re we write collectively, which we're doing more and more. But I, uh, I certainly see that now as the past has been this great big just path leading up to being able to do this now. Right. You know? Well, you talk about songwriting. Is this the first time you've ever uh, stepped out as a songwriter, or is it something that you've been doing a, you know, a lot of over the years? Well, it's something that I've done over the years, but it's something that I have largely kept to myself. Um, and I'm sure there's somebody out there going, that's because your songs suck. But... <laughs> <laughs> Your own worst critic. They don't. They don't anymore. Um, <laughs> the first songs that I wrote were they were okay. There were actually a couple of them were actually pretty good. But I got better because I started to listen more and more. I listened to what other people are doing, and now I'm in a, a very heavy listening mode where I um, I take time to listen to what other people are doing now more uh, more for the songwriting that other people are doing, but also for what they're recording and their production values and how they've how they've put everything together. Uh, this first CD for us was my first CD to ever uh, mix, master. Uh, I'd never done any of that for uh, you know a final product um, or a final product, and uh, so I've been learning as I've been going. You know. Um, yes, indeed. Now are you talking about doing the mixing and mastering and all that stuff. What, what are some of the challenges that you faced? I guess in the well, uh, first of all, is the uh, you know the, the biggest challenge and the biggest hurdle that I had, especially toward the end of the mixing and mastering process, was the equipment that we recorded on. is an older Akai 12 track, uh, and it started to these guys don't even know. Yeah, they, we they weren't around for the very the end. Yeah. No, no, no. But no, I'm saying no. They weren't around for this final phase that I was going through where, <clears throat> see, I had hair when I started this. <laughs> right. And I pulled and it, it all out. I, yeah. And then, that's right. I had a full head of black hair. They used to call me Brillo. <laughs> you too. But, no, okay, whatever. Whatever, dude. But, it, it, but at the end, the 12-track was starting to exhibit problems, and I had to accelerate the process and, and make sure that we had the product complete. 
So at the very end, they were getting text messages, like in the middle of the night, just me going, oh, my God, yeah. I'm losing it. You know, just just uh, losing my freaking mind. because in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he'd still wake up and go, okay, dude. Well. You know, he'd trail off in the text message. Uh, uh, dot, 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 dot. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, we'll go on to the lead guitar player here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jim Stanley. Yes, sir. Now, this ought to be interesting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Where did the music all start with you? Where, where did you decide to pick up the guitar and become a lead guitar player? Well, uh, I mean, even as far back as I can remember as a little kid, my mom and dad just had tons of records around the house. So there was, there was always music in our house uh, pretty much at all hours of the day whenever we were home, and I, I just... Uh, <laughs> you just kind of picked up on it, and uh, back in the late seventies, my dad bought a, an old Yamaha acoustic guitar. Well, it, it was new then, but uh, and uh, he never learned to play it, so it sat for a long time. When I was about twelve, uh, after much begging from my mom and much begging towards my mom and dad, they finally agreed to allow me to, to pick it up and, and learn to play it. Which I got the big Roy Clark uh, guitar method book out and. and eventually kind of taught myself how to play so uh just listening to about any kind of genre of music you can uh, can imagine uh i uh i just kind of picked up and, and started uh drawing on on the influences i had and uh started going from there yes indeed he's starting with the camera again it's all good <laughs> you could have gotten Welcome a picture from the post office <laughs> yeah. he's crying out loud <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, well, Mr. Bill on bass. Right. What did it start with you, man? Uh, well, I started. My first instrument was actually fiddle, uh, aka violin. Well, did people, it have a case? What's that? Did it have a case? It did have a case, so I guess it was more of a violin. Okay, well, no, <laughs> the second question: Did it have tobacco Girl. spit on the case? Um, they, there might have been some. Yes. Okay, it's a fiddle. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> now, a lot of people ask me what the difference is between a fiddle and a violin. For one, one of the reasons, one of the uh, explanations is that. A violin has a case. A fiddle has a potato sack. Another thing is you can spill beer on a fiddle, but not on a violin. So okay. I got a bunch of them. Anyway, but it is the exact same <laughs> instrument. <laughs> um, so I started off playing that when I was nine. Um, something about the the fiddle slash violin just uh, got me interested in playing it. I, I see people playing it on TV and uh, hear it on the radio, and I just decided I wanted to learn how to play that thing. And so my parents found a teacher for me. And I took lessons for about a year and a half or so, and uh, my teacher ended up moving away, but I had learned enough to where I could progress on my own. And so uh, I've been playing it ever since, and over the years I picked up other instruments like guitar and uh, uh, Cajun accordion and all kinds of oddball things, but uh, somewhere along the line I picked up bass. I'd always loved the bass. So probably when I was in my teens, I, uh, I got my first bass, and uh, I played with a lot of Led Zeppelin recordings and uh, got familiar with it and uh, just kind of grew from there and uh, here I am today still playing And that's bass. how you got to be friends with Jimmy Page. That, exactly, well. yes, yes. Is the restraining order still? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> if it well, wasn't for that damn restraining order. Well, always oh, he doesn't pay attention. Stalking yeah. is a form of flattery. So yeah, sometimes. 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 <laughs> when it comes to flattening tires, and, well, we're not going to go into that. Yep. And balling rabbits and all that. That's my story. So we'll, we'll save that one for That's a later day. There you go. <laughs> well, Mr. Matt, what about you, my friend? Uh, well, I uh, guess I had, I had guitar lessons when I was in second grade for like two months. And uh, so I got my first guitar then and... Then I dropped it until I was 16, and uh, my dad had a really old, like a Yamaha Eterna, like the very entry-level guitar, and he never played it, so I started picking it up one day, and it kind of came back to me a little bit, and I said, you know, I could probably do this if I, if I really practiced, and so uh, I started uh, playing with my cousin, who uh, I used to play around in Alexandria with, and uh, that's when I started playing live places, and then uh, when I moved to Baton Rouge for school, I met uh, Mr. Jim Stanley. At a uh, live mic at a Hojo's, which is no longer around, but uh, Mr. Lynn Anselmo was the, uh, I guess, the MC over that. And so I met Jim through there, and Jim Stanley, I guess, we have two Jims. And then and Hello. Jim George playing with that <laughs> same band uh, at Fat Cats in Prairieville. And so that's kind of how I got to know all these guys. So 
And then I picked up drums at some point along the way, too. Not really sure how that happened, but it did. I have a drum set in my house now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and speaking of that, yeah. was it the first Void uh, quote-unquote gig? Yes. yes. Right? I was uh, sick yes. as a dog, and I, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't go. I couldn't make it, and we'd been rehearsing. And so Matt dropped his guitar and got behind the drums and did the gig. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So yes. trivia question for for all you listeners: Who was the original Void drummer? <laughs> uh, that's right. <laughs> well, Matt, I'd I'd hate for you to disappear into the desert of <laughs> Texas somewhere <laughs> with that question. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, you know, I'm not too familiar. I'm not very. I'm going to admit, I'm not very familiar with the original uh, music as far as like the market or the genre because. A lot of the bands in Louisiana are cover bands, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's cool. But when you get off of the original stuff, it really shows somebody's, uh, I guess, the musicianship and the creativity. Now, has there been any challenges so far for you guys as far as getting gigs or anything, being that you're playing in, like an all-original uh, set list? Well, that's that's a good question. You know, um, we've had – there's there's several gigs that have been offered to us. Um, we've been of the mind so far that we were going to uh, – learn these songs do, be able to do them very well uh, and and have a few gigs here and there for now uh, because we all play with other groups and we all have other musical interests you know I, I play with a couple of bands in town uh, United We Jam uh, and I also uh, play with you know occasional gigs with the Elvin Killerby yes. and we're, we stay very busy outside of this so our focus has been to this point to get to where we, we decided many months ago we were going to explore the idea of recording a CD of all original material, and then we were going to do it. And we decided to put our focus into that. So it hadn't been a challenge yet because it hasn't been something that we've really gone after, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I think that with the release of the CD uh, and with the word of mouth that we've been getting, which is very positive, especially and, on social media. And social yeah. media has been wonderful. Yeah, it's been a it's been a blessing to us, you know, because we've really gotten the word out about our work, and and the, it's all about getting the music out to to people to hear it, and uh, and we're having a very very positive response. So it, to 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 keep answering the question, it's just that we have had a few gigs where we've kind of chosen kind of where we're going to play, right, so right. to speak. I think, you, as you mentioned with cover bands, there are a lot of absolutely talented people out there doing really great covers of, of classic songs, and we have the utmost respect for, for what they're doing, but there are a lot of people doing that. When we sort of decided to commence with this project, what we wanted to do was to, to again, fill that void that we saw that of... Uh, <laughs> Rock and roll, where where it was original material. You said the name uh, of our band. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, and and again, that that's really why we've taken the hard line that we we are not going to play any covers, uh, and that we are going to focus on our original material. Um, we think there's definitely an audience out there, and we we really want to, uh, out of respect to them, we really want to uh, to focus on that to give them. Uh, 110% of our, of our efforts. And yes, I'd like indeed. to interject that uh, at rehearsal we have we have this can that we <laughs> all have to put money in. Anybody who plays a cover lick, including myself <laughs> or Randy, if he just says something, starts singing from another uh, band's songs. Money in the can. It's kind of like a cuss bucket. <laughs> that, exactly. That's how we bought the void copter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. yes, indeed. Well, I mean, well, how's the groupie activity on that level? Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Whoa, it's just a joke. Matt, just... would you like to feel that question? What's that? I'm just I, uh, kidding. I have no comment. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... Okay, I'd like to point something out at this point. We actually have missed one of our members of our band. Yeah, yeah well, uh, Mr. Randy Porter, who yes, has indeed. been... Uh, all the, I guess, all of the uh, uh, spending a lot of time promoting and and all of that. He, he's real quiet when it comes to this stuff. He's he's been on the show before and let everybody else talk. I can he, bring the mic over to him if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, now, exactly, Randy. I mean, you're uh, you're kind of on. Uh, you you one of the biggest uh, supporters. Yes, indeed. He is our biggest supporter. I guess you yeah, have the biggest supporter. You introduced him at uh, what was it? A gig? I seen. Uh, I was doing a little Phil research. Brady's. Phil yeah. Brady's and uh, so. 
I mean, now you and Jim George have been great friends. I'm sure you're great friends with everybody right. here, but um, they're my special friends. Yeah. <laughs> so special. Now we know where the, the bikini comes right. from. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, what 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 part? Uh, I guess what is, what is one of the biggest parts that really you play as far as their. Uh, uh, Jim talked to me months ago about maybe coming over here and doing some recording on the drums, and uh, I told him places open. I like having parties. I'm going to take up the slack. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. yes, and, uh, so next thing I know, he asked about getting a void over here, and I got to meet all the fine fellows, and they're and Bill. really a, and Bill, yeah. <laughs> they're really a bunch of great fellows and musicians, and I miss them when they're not here. Oh, <laughs> if I go on. Uh, so Aww. they kind of just come over here and have fun. As they, yeah. Randy really isn't the fifth person in the band. I mean, it's not really yeah, the really. boy without Randy. Yeah. That's right. He's he's also uh, not only is he our unofficial manager, um, he's also our official roadie. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, polished symbols. That's right. Major air takes, fresheners are available. That's right. And if you would like an explanation of why he just mentioned air fresheners, <laughs> please feel free to contact us through our website yeah. or yes, the indeed. Void on Facebook, and we'll explain it to you. All those links will be shared in the show notes. But uh, <laughs> with all of that said, what? Um, so what direction are you planning on are you guys planning on taking? Are y'all trying to get any uh national or international attention? Is that something is that one of your goals? For? Grammy. World domination. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I that's mean, what that's, the void copters. And then we'll spread right, to Mars. Right. That's what I go for. Everything <laughs> I do is Earth, world we'll domination. Go straight for Mars. Exactly. I like it. That's cool. <laughs> yes, indeed. And now, I mean y'all are kind of venturing off and I mean it's something that I'm a big fan of, which is kinda of like an underground indie uh, like independent music type stuff in which I mean I think once you get into it, really, you realize how how big of a support yeah. and a big network that is. And and also, you know, speaking of that, but yeah, it's not. It goes beyond family and friends. Now we've got. Um, I just checked on the phone uh, just a second ago, and uh, what was it, Jim? Uh, Four hundred eighty-three likes on uh, Facebook. Well, that's our the Void Musician Band page, um, and. Uh, I you know I don't know if you stand in a room with 483 people that's a lot of people mm-hmm. uh, but we get feedback from those people definitely and one reason that they they are drawn to it uh, I think Jim had said this before is because we um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of oddball humor within this group trust me <laughs> and the things that we post well not Matt no. <laughs> he's, he's pretty much straight the latest, but the rest of it. Um, but we, we pretty much, when we post things, we try to reflect that, uh, that aspect of us because we're, we, we can be just downright weird, especially Bill here. That's right. Yeah. He, yeah, he's wearing Batman pajamas. I mean, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who the hell shows up at band and, practice with and, pajamas and on? And Robin man. slippers. Yes. <laughs> I borrowed them from my son. <laughs> <laughs> that barely fit. Yeah. Yes, A little tight. <laughs> I think the, the, the whole energy of this band, I mean, since the first time we actually even sat down together to discuss this this crazy idea, the energy you know betwixt us all has been just great. You know, I mean the the, the humor, the, uh, uh, the 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 attitude, and, and just the direction that we wanted to go in <coughs> is, is we we've, we've been really blessed with that. And it's mm-hmm. I, I think when you listen to our to our music, you can hear that uh, that energy. And, uh, it's a lot of fun. Right. We have, we yeah. have a lot. We have, a we lot have fun. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And a good example of that is the song "Playing in a Rock and Roll Band," yeah. which Jim Stanley wrote. And uh, when he first came to us in a very early rehearsal with that song, uh, he had the idea that each one of us would take a <laughs> verse. There's four verses, four of us, and we would start with Matt, who's the youngest man in the band, and it would end with, well, me. <laughs> I'm the oldest, and the lyrics take you oh, through the. Least the per- young. Uh, okay, the least young, yeah, the least young right? Okay. And the <laughs> least, least that means young. I'm the most young. So the, no, I'm the least hairy, <laughs> also. By the way, you're the least old. He's the least young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the 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 lyrics detail uh, this rock and roll star's journey through his life from the early years where it's just this huge party 
Uh, and one of my favorite lines is, in the, I think in the second or third verse, the third verse is where he's talking about now he's got a $100 habit every day. And, <laughs> and, uh, and then it ends with me basically just, it just been, I've been driven into the ground and I'm just, you know, just, it's, it's, all, it's over. <laughs> See, look, look, and Russell's like, yep, that's about right. That's <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's the whole con- that's the concept of music, period. It's like, a, it's like an evolution almost. It's a cathartic journey through that entire song for the entire um, uh, rock star process basically yes indeed and that's jim's song he wrote that i'm still waiting for our learjet limo yes. learjet <laughs> they're, they're limo okay. they'll be here friday make that so, uh, well we uh, have to we I still think, have to pay off the void copter. yeah, the void yeah. <laughs> i think one thing though that we uh, uh all of us missed the days when you could actually just put an album on and listen to the entire album from start to finish um you know, nowadays we're, we're the music business, at least as, as I perceive it, is more based on singles and individual songs and things like that. You don't have an album as a as a continuous work of art that you can listen to from start to finish that kind of takes you from one place to another. Uh, those are kind of the days that we miss, and what what really stood out is rock and roll to us, and that's something that we you know, hope we, that we have done with the uh, the Where Prohibited album and uh, certainly something that we want to carry forward. We want to put out a product where when people get one of our albums, they can listen to the whole thing from start to finish, and there's this, with as as varied uh, styles of music as are in the album, we really think there's something in there for everybody. And, uh, you know, I I really want it to be an enjoyable experience for someone to sit down and listen to the whole thing. I like where we're going with the next one. We're going funk, rock, reggae. Yeah, well, even with this album, I feel like, you know, so we all four individually write songs, and then, you know, we play them as a band, and so I think you can see the personality differences in all the songs for for each songwriter. And we we wrote as our first song as a group that we wrote together was the problem with being alive. And I think that everyone's ability and style uh, that everyone put into that song is is, is fairly obvious. You know, yeah, uh, it's a straight ahead, it's a rocking tune, but it's it's got a lot of elements of uh, poppiness. You know, I mean, it's it's a good, it's a well crafted pop tune. I think mm-hmm. uh, we've got some, some edginess too. It does. Yeah. We've got some really good comments from afar about that song. You know, mm-hmm. across the pond. Yeah. I was just reading one yesterday from, um, from England. Right. Um, and, Jimmy uh, Beach? Yeah, John, Jimmy Beach. <laughs> Who's his nephew? Who's his nephew? Yeah. John Bonham's son. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you guys, I, I recently um, signed on with Spectrum Music Group. It's, just, it's an entertainment music label. It's one of the largest in the world. I, at one time, it was the largest in the world, but I mean, I'm sure it's dropped off by now. But, you know, I work A&R and I do radio promotions for them. And every day, you know, I go to my email, open my inbox, people send me these songs. Hey, review this song. You know, they want to get their foot in the door. Uh, from what, As a musician and, and listening to and trying to critique somebody else's stuff, you know, and you don't want to be mean or anything, I'm going to tell you what, what the music world and especially the indie music world is really missing these days is creativity. Mm-hmm. Sure. So just like you, was, you guys was talking about the rock and roll band, uh, you know, living the rock and roll band song. I mean, that's, that's a creative thing to go from young to, oh, I mean, that, that's very creative. So, I mean, the music the music world is is starving for creativity. Period. So I mean, I even heard the song, and I, I don't want to hear it because I'm excited about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I want to encourage everybody out there to go to you know iTunes, uh, Spotify, Amazon, or hell, just go and type the, the Void Br in Google. Mm-hmm. And they're also on Twitter and, and Facebook and all that good stuff. And follow them. Write a good review on iTunes. It helps with the visibility of the song Absolutely. and getting it out there. And um, bye bye bye. That's what it's all about. <laughs> You know, and um, help these boys out. People, we we are taking advance uh, orders for our second CD, which will come out probably in about what two months, maybe or something like that. <laughs> something if we get like on, that. if we can just we get, get on, on it, yeah. we just get on the recording part. Yeah. Yeah. We'll actually probably have the second CD out in a two or three months. So, uh, right now we're going to focus on getting this out uh, and having our release party, which once again is at Phil Brady's uh, this coming Friday, January 9th. Uh, also, we're going to have the Rakers. Uh, who are going to be opening up for us, a great band that they do original rock uh, from here in town. They're going to start about 9 o'clock, uh, play about an hour, and then we're going to come on uh, after we get the stage set and uh, ready to go. Got to get the pyrotechnics in place, make sure they face out at the audience so they don't burn us. Two and, words, great white. 
Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Are you trying to say you want us to use their pyrotechnic <laughs> show? No. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> their two big hits were cover songs. So. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. No, 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 don't follow that. No. <laughs> like I said, I'm aiming them out at the audience. <laughs> well, let me ask, any encouraging words for any young, inspiring musicians that maybe want to follow in you guys' footsteps? I would don't say, give nope, up. sure don't. Don't give up. <laughs> and I, I think the main thing is that no matter what you're doing, if you're passionate about it and you're honest uh, with your creativity and you, you put that into your music, there is an audience out there. It may not be readily apparent to you, but keep working on it, keep being focused toward it, and uh, keep, uh, you know, maintain that that, uh, that line. And uh, I really think that uh, your audience will find you and you will find them. Yes, indeed. Mr. Jim, anything? I'd say that one of the most important things I've learned, especially from this experience, is uh, I, I was already writing, but, you know, so if you are out there and you're writing, continue and, and learn and improve. If you have not started, if you've never written an original song, sit down and do it. Just it, it and it just like my first couple few songs, it might be crap, you know. But I mean, but it's your crap, right? You know, <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. And I like to bring my crap with me. <laughs> it's a lot of but it's it's a good <laughs> idea. The thing yeah. about songwriting is, you know, you may write twenty, thirty songs before you have one that that is really what you think is a great yes. song. But before you get there, you've got to write those songs. So I, I would encourage anyone that, with even a smattering of interest in it to pick up the pencil and the notepad and sit down and start writing. Uh, even things that come out as, as really kind of crazy ideas at first can become really great songs. And you know what that so. means by his math alone? That means because we have 11 really kick-ass songs on the album, that means we've written 473 not-so-great. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Mr. Bill? Any, anything you want to add for the uh, inspired musician? Uh, yeah, I just I'll just kind of go along with what what Jim and Jim the Jims had to say. Um, Don't put if, me in the same group with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, if uh, if if music is uh, is what you love, it's in your blood, that's your thing. Then by all means, pursue it. Do not ever give up with it. Um, make make something of it. Uh, just keep on trying, uh, keep on writing those songs. Uh, I, I tried writing a bunch of songs back in the '90s, and uh, they were pretty lame. <laughs> uh, but I might, I might see if I can find them and revive them. Yeah, but, uh, oh yeah, let's do that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think the stuff I'm writing now, I, it's I, I still struggle to call myself a songwriter, but I guess I am because I have recorded material. But anyway, I have proof um, that you are 50 degrees is one of the ways that you prove that you're an awesome that's, songwriter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great song. Great song. Oh, uh, well, thank you. But uh but yeah, I mean, I, I think the stuff I'm writing now is is much better than when I was in my 20s and uh I'm just sort of I've I've caught the bug with the songwriting and that's that's something I'd like to continue doing and, and definitely continue playing the music. Uh, so just uh just keep after it, never give up. Well, and one of Bill's uh one of Bill's songs, and it's an awesome song, is the lead-off song in the album, Temporary. Um, it does. That's it. You, you find out what you're getting into when you listen to that song. You know exactly. But but Bill has Bill came to us with some of these songs, and and it was just I was amazed. Like, yeah. and he was kind of saying, well, he was kind of like, yeah, you know. And I said, no, 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 these are awesome songs, man. We got to do this. So. <laughs> well, I mean, in songwriting, I mean, or than anything, you're your own worst critic. Yeah, so you got to kind of get out there and let everybody else here. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but just no, I'm, hey. I'm interrupting everybody else. <laughs> but that's <laughs> talking about what Jim said. Uh, that's that's another thing I find through uh, through collaborating with these guys is that uh, even if I'm not 100 percent confident with the material that I write, they inspire me. They give me the confidence to keep it up. Uh, just it's it's extremely encouraging for them to want to play the songs that I wrote. And uh, I'm I'm very appreciative of that. So that that gives me a lot more confidence in what I'm doing. So it's 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 great being in a group with these with these fellows. It sounds like you really like us. Yes, I do. Indeed. <laughs> well, Matt, you you're an inspiring musician. So we'll go on to the next. <laughs> did, you get, did you get all of that? <laughs> did you? Get, I have my pen and paper out. So. Uh, <laughs> what do they say? Go I'm ahead, brother. You're in it too. The biggest thing I'm taking from this is. Uh, learning that's what I've really tried to you know take from all this you know besides having a lot of fun uh, 
obviously I'm significantly younger than than it, the rest of the group, and so I have a lot to learn from them. Listen to this, God, man. I'm only saying facts, but uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, and I, I just started songwriting. I think I wrote my first song you know, two years ago, and uh, yeah, really kind of still have struggled songwriting. Uh, I have tons of notes on my phones, but I can never exactly put them together. Absolutely brilliant writer, though. So, yes, absolutely. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. He said the only worst critic. So, but uh, I would tell you know find ways to learn. You know progress as much as you can uh, and stick with it because uh, I, I've seen some really good people who you know, great musicians who stopped playing uh, my grandfather's actually a really good musician and he stopped playing for a while and he always tells me just never even if you sit down and play for you know once a week never put it down and you know, never stop so I'd say always try to learn and progress and challenge yourself and surround yourself with guys who can challenge you and help you progress Yes, indeed. Well, if any 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 promoters or any any uh, bar owners or what have you would like to book the void, uh, who would they contact or where would they go as far as the web goes? You could contact you could contact me, Jim I'm George. Jim George, you can look for me on Facebook, Jim George, drummer percussionist. That would be the easiest and quickest way to get in touch with me. Um, you can also find us our band's uh, artist a musician page, which is the Void uh, Band Musician page, and. Uh, and then I, you know, I'm sure that you wouldn't mind people getting in touch with you, Jim. Yeah, just contact e- e- any of us mm-hmm. here on the uh, on Facebook or, or wherever you may find us. Uh, we're readily available, and we are, are looking to share what we uh, this that we've come upon with with anyone who'd like to uh, to be a part of it. Yeah, yes, you'll indeed. never have a show like it. You'll never have another band like it there. So, <laughs> well, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do they see us Friday when they see the kiss makeup that we're yeah. wearing? Oh, yeah. the, and we also have a, a contact page on the website too. That's right. We have a, we have a website that uh, is actually if you Google the Void Baton Rouge, uh, it should be coming up by now. It's a brand new website, so the Certainly. SEO settings are still setting in. Uh, right. I, I don't know if the web crawlers have caught it yet, but they will uh, very soon. So the the Void Baton Rouge on Google should get you there. If it doesn't, it will definitely show you our Facebook page, and you can find us. From there. Definitely, and I'll definitely share it in the show notes. So you got to do is just click on the information for this uh, show, and all your good information will be there. I want to thank you guys for joining me. It's been 30, 33 minutes. Good show. Lord. It's, it's been right. a blast. <laughs> and... Um, I can't wait to hear the, the stuff, and uh, if if at all possible, which this is going to air Friday, so we're, you're listening to us, so be sure and go check them out. Phil Brady's show time is at nine show, o'clock. start at nine o'clock. The Rakers will be opening up uh, the show, and uh, start at nine o'clock. We'll go on after they're done. Uh, there is a five dollar cover charge. We will be selling our CDs at the show. The, sh- the CDs will be ten dollars a piece. Or special deal, two for twenty, as Matt says. <laughs> Just bring uh, roughly about thirty bucks. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Get a CD, pay you in, get a couple of beers. That's it. Or buy the band a couple of beers. Hey, yeah, that's even better. Especially Bill. You better bring 50. <laughs> yeah, bring 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's indeed. laughs> All right, guys. For the void, I'm hashtag RDM Russell McLean. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Russell. Thank you. Right on.